Good morning, class. My name is Jose Rodriguez. And I'm Truthy J. Davis. And today we're going to be talking to you guys about a skill that's highly overlooked, but it's very impactful. And it can truly change your lives. And it's called the nonverbals of leadership. So imagine you're going to an interview. You're ready to go. You followed all the rules of all the presentations we've had so far. You're, you have your resume prepared. You're the best candidate for this interview. And you think you're going to pretty much get this job. But you walk in, you see this guy walking out. He has his shoulders back, head held high. He just looks very charismatic. And you see the look on the interviewer's face. It just looks like the guy's already given him the job, but you're just kind of going there. So you go inside, you do your interview. Later on, you find out the char more charismatic guy ended up getting the job. Do you guys think that's unfair, maybe, what this ma a manager might have done? Well, according to the survey that we took in class, 97% of you guys are probably giving the same guy the job because 97% of the class said that they heavily rely on body language when they judge somebody. So it's, body language is a lot more than just the way you move or you know the movements that you make with your hands or anything like that. It's your energy and how you make people feel when you're in a room and when you're speaking, how they are looking at you and the energy and the aura that you carry around. So before I get too excited and go on, on, on about this topic, I'm going to hand it over to Jose to tell you about a really powerful and impactful story about body language really changing the future and the past of our country. Okay, so the year was 1960, and it was uh, just about, America was just about to see their first televised uh, presidential debate. The opponents were Kennedy and Nixon. You see, uh, if you were looking at this uh, from right now, you know, you would, as a historian, you know, you would know that uh, Nixon was vice president at the time, and he was extremely active in foreign policy, and, you know, he was experienced, he was a more experienced politician, and, he, you know, he, he was doing a good job as a vice president. Kennedy, on the other hand, he was a young man, no political experience uh, from a wealthy New England family. So what happened here? Uh, anyone would assume Nixon won, but Kennedy won by 0.02%, a slim margin. Now, uh, when polled, uh, shortly after a study ran that uh, the people who saw the debate on TV said that Kennedy won by a large margin, while the people who heard the debate on the radio said it was an equal uh, debate or Nixon slightly won. So what does this mean? Uh, Kennedy's nonverbals uh, gave him the advantage. This is because Nixon, he never looked at the camera when he was, uh, during the debate, even though his advisors told him he was focused on uh, content, you know, not really delivery. While Kennedy, also being recognized as one of the first presidents to you know, really harness the power of presidential image. Uh, you can look that up, his handshakes, everything. Uh, he looked at the camera, not even at the people who were asking him the questions. You know, if you were in the room, you would have thought Kennedy was pretty rude. But actually, if you were an American, you know, sitting in your living room watching the debate, Nixon never looking at the camera, never looking at you, you know. So that's just, that gave Kennedy the upper hand. Yeah. So, based on our research, uh, we have concluded that these are the four basic uh, things you guys need to focus on to harness the power that, you know, Kennedy was able to harness, uh, for example. The first is creating a powerful first impression. Linguistics which say how you say it, body language, what you do, you know, movement, speed, and developing the mindset of a leader. So my partner here, Shruti, is going to explain the first two. All right, so the first 30 seconds. You guys look at this picture really quickly. What do you see? Same exact guy, you know, but you have a totally different impression of the both of them just by looking at them for the first 30 seconds. And even as we're speaking and standing up here, within the first 30 seconds to the next five minutes, everyone's going to have a judgment about maybe what kind of person we are or what, what, um, who we are as a leader. So you want to make sure that in the, within the first 30 seconds, you're able to analyze and scope out your audience and really how you want to make them feel. You want to understand the importance of making that true first impression. And a lot of this has to do with your expressions and the eye contact that you make with somebody. You don't want to be looking down or you don't want to be looking away. You want to make direct eye contact, but not too long where it's creepy. You want to do it the right way and to, to the right amount. And your posture also, the way that this guy is standing versus the way that that guy is standing, you can really tell you, you kind of get a vibe and energy coming off of that person. And a lot of this also has to do with the thoughts you have in your mind. Whatever you're feeling inside, your body is going to show it regardless. It's going to be really hard to control that. So when you have a calm mind and you have 
calm thoughts and positive thoughts, it's going to show through your body language. And well, as you can see here, clothing is also very important. You want to dress nice. You want to look good. If it's an interview, anywhere you go, you kind of want to make sure that you leave that right first impression on people. Okay, so moving on to linguistics. So linguistics, I mean, we, we all have, nobody's perfect. We all have that, you know, little thing that we do with our voices that might not be the most leadership-like voice, but for example, the up talk. I actually uh, heard many TED Talks and different uh, things about this. Up talk is when you talk like a valley girl, you kind of add that like question to the end of every statement. Instead of saying it as a statement, you kind of make that end word sound like a question. It makes you, it makes other people feel like you don't really know what you're talking about. You're questioning everything you're saying. Why would they trust you at that point as a leader, especially? And your vocal tone and your pitch, all of these things. I'm going to tell you guys the perfect, the perfect combination that researchers have come up with and the speed, using accurate language and not using slang words, and also having the right vocabulary. So according to research, um, it's, you have to use moderate volume, faster in rate, lower in pitch, and it has to be clearly articulated. So those are the most four important things that can really help you sound like a leader. And even as we're speaking here, we might not be perfect, but these are things that we can improve on daily to ensure that we are better leaders, or at least people perceive us as better leaders. And I'm gonna hand it over to Jose to talk about, a little bit more about body language. Okay, so body language, uh, as I'm saying it here in this slide, is uh, defined as you know how you move, and defined by these four basic things, and this is uh, to touch on that later. Posture. I'm going to invite all of you to sit down uh, with your hands, both of them, you know, on the armrest, you know, to spread your feet. Basically, a uh, posture, you know, of occupying space, right? So you, you want to occupy as much space, not really occupy space, <laughs> but, you know, just <laughs> occupying space, right? So this posture, posturing like that, <laughs> has two major benefits, right? The first is you're perceived as a leader, right? You can see Putin here, who is uh, always, you know, trying to be perceived as a leader. You know, pictures of him riding bears and stuff. He actually, like, he, he knows about those pictures and he likes them. So right here he's standing, you know, with uh, occupying space. The second benefit of that posture, which uh, we will touch on later, is it actually makes your brain produce more testosterone. This leads to increase in uh, risk-taking abilities, a belief in your own uh, abilities to lead, increase your pain tolerance, and, um, you know, all of these are, are important for testosterone. All these are important for leaders. Movement. You can, you guys can sit down and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Movement, right? So leaders, um, they're perceived to be too busy to be fidgeting around, right? You want your movements to be calm, deliberate. You know, you don't want to move. You want to be seen like you you know how you're moving and you move for reasons, right? That's, that's important. Gestures. Um, study after study shows that speakers who use gestures are uh, more understood, their message comes off clearer, and their seem is more competent, which is very important for a leader. Nobody will follow an incompetent leader. And mindfulness of others' body language, that's super important too, because um, you need to, you need to if, if you're speaking with a large uh, amount of people, you know, you need to be able to read if people are paying attention, if they find what you're saying interesting. You know, once you say something that's interesting and they lean forward, then that's a tip to you know, keep talking about that. If you say something and they lean back, that might not mean anything. That's why you have to cluster signs, right? They have to lean back and, you know, cross their arms, you know? Because if they lean back, that doesn't mean anything, right? They could just be, you know, relaxing, right? So you have to, you know, cross arms, lean back, touch face, all those things, you have to cluster signs. I'm not gonna get too in depth with the signs because we don't have time. The second other <coughs> big thing is the attitude and mindset, right? So as uh, the study showed with the posture experiment, if you stand occupying space, your brain actually, you know, produces more testosterone, right? So this, this is curious and interesting because you're, you have a physical, you tell your body what to do, and then that changes your mind, that changes your risk-taking abilities, that changes the chemical composition of, you know, your brain, right? So by repeatedly acting like a leader, which is right here, faking it in the beginning, by repeatedly acting like a leader, you can technically trick your brain and, you know, kind of hack that, chemical balance to technically think more like a leader more naturally in the future, you know, so that will help you, you know, not try to focus on all the tips and tricks we're giving here and just have it come naturally, right? 
mindfulness, you need to be mindful of your body language, you know what I just said. Sincerity and passion go hand in hand with direction of, if, if you want to be followed, if you want to be seen as the leader, you, got, you have to be sincere and you have to be passionate about whatever it is you're standing for. You, you have to have direction for it. You know, if you have passion for something and you're not going anywhere, nobody's going to follow you. And you can't stand up for yourself. You have to have to stand up for an idea, right? So two-way street, mind and body is what I said. You know, if you do something, your mind believes it, vice versa. Okay. So this study, a study done at UCLA found that a message is based on only 7% of the words that were used. So only 7% impact was made to you guys about everything that we were saying. The words didn't really mean much. It's the way that we were speaking, our tone of voice, the way we explain things. So facial expressions, responsible for 55% of the total impact of the message. Sounds pretty, it's a pretty crazy number and you wanna make sure that all of these things are taken care of, not just what you say, not just your content, but everything else that comes along with it. So, now that we've learned how to have, you know, maybe a little bit better, how to get better at body language, I really want you guys to focus on the bigger picture here. Sure, body language, these tips and tricks may help you with the job interview, or help you get through a, you know, a scary presentation. But more, more than that, we all have passions, we have ideas, and we have a purpose in this life. So in order to, Further that, you want people to follow you as a leader. In order to really leave a mark in this world or truly make any changes in the world, you want other people to perceive you as the leader and you want them to follow you, follow your ideas, further your ideas. So all of these things are so important. And so nonverbal signals of a leader can make or break their success, as you can see in the presidential election. In daily life, everywhere you go, it really matters how you speak or the things that you do. So be aware of your nonverbals and use them to your advantage in every situation, and you're gonna be successful, and you're gonna make a difference in this world. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you.